one thing that this group has in spades is belief. And, uh, you know, they believe they could get the job done. Well, Eddie, you, you were down there on uh, the first Friday in February in Musgrave Park and we were going, we didn't really know what we were in for, but um, we saw a team that went 11 points behind, refused yep. to panic, and that was kind of their trademark. Well, I think there's a maturity around them that you don't often see, even senior players, that when they get major line breaks, and you've only here, Harry Byrne makes a great break, so that's, this is a 55-metre break. It's a great offload here to Hawkshaw, and then another offload to Conor Phillips. So now they're suddenly on the five-metre line. So a lot of teams panic here and they try something that doesn't work out. But there's 11 rocks since that last rock. 11 rocks and they crash over. So they're just patient. When they, when they put you under pressure, they keep you under pressure and they get a result. They don't waste chances. And they crash over here 11 rocks later, which is you know, unusual because you think they're five metres out on the first rock. You know, something better is going to happen. They don't panic. And again, you see it in the, in the next score here. It's a great break here by Liam Turner. Outside break, and again, it gets free. <clears throat> Tackle, and again, they're, they're short here. They're six, seven metres out. They stay on another ten rocks later, in under the course. Again, even here when they're held up, they manage to get the ball back. The rest of the referee doesn't give a scrum. They reset, and they crash over eventually against the post. And it takes a lot of maturity and... You know, understanding of the game that this is you've made a big impact here, not to throw it away. And here again, fantastic outside break here again. Um, inside pass, great lines of running. Again, you think to try on, it has to be a try, hmm. but it isn't a try. Just hold it up, and again, three or four rocks later, without too much to do, uh, they score again under the post. And what you, you see a lot of teams, even at senior level, is off these line breaks, someone tries to do something spectacular to get a score immediately. Sure. And it goes, we all, you know, we mm. throw our hands I in I often our, notice that. We throw our heads yeah. in, the, in our hands and say, oh, if you'd only held on to it. Mm. But there's three examples there where they actually had fantastic breaks, mm. didn't score off the break, didn't panic, mm. went through the phases and scored beside the post. And that kind of, I, I suppose it's clarity of thought under pressure mm. and they were behind in some of these games they had to be really clear what they were doing that's the thing I like most about them I think it also comes into what Fiona touched on I think it's they've taken responsibility to play for each other mm. and that's some of the intangibles that, um, that their coach has created for them because they want to play for him and they want to play for each other so they take the responsibility of not being that player that's going to make that mistake and you talk about you're right at that age sometimes they try to do the individual flary stuff that gets called white line fever yeah. these sure are players that are, praise, that are great yeah. friends on and off the field they see somebody make a break. Sometimes that's what you need in a team to be a great team. It's often those intangibles that separate mm. an average or good team to a team that's going to work to get 50 metres up the field or not be the one that knocks on the ball or not be the one that gives up the try. They're playing as a team, and that's, that's what he, he said. You know, there's, there's, there's some of the hole is, is bigger than the parts, and yeah, it's true. And, and they have made mistakes. Even the standout players have been guilty of elementary mistakes, but there doesn't seem to be any bother. They have faith in each other. They get on with it. I know, that's it. I mean, we saw the last day, you know, that French try where there was, it went off um, one of the Irish lads' feet and then the French mm. run, and uh, Carbonet, you know, great pace and acceleration in. But they're, they're buying each other up and I think part of their strength is their pack as well and that it's been largely unchanged, you know, and they have a great, I suppose, sense... It is the of, same starting it, pack it is, now yeah, but even within the games, yeah, yeah. Within the team as well, even during the matches, you know, and when the people have come in, it's been, it's been seamless. But, like, you look at Josh Richley there and, you know, he just buys them all off himself and Tierney Martin vying for who will get the tries but not in a way that it's just it's that belief as you're saying Eddie without the white line fever and they've had setbacks in every game we've seen you talk mm. about the mistakes the lucky breaks the ball shoots out of a ruck they made a very bad mistake against England a loose kick to the full back he ran it in for 50 metres mm -hmm. they bounce back every time mm. it's a hard thing to do even mm. at senior level players mm. don't well, a lot of teams would have lost those games yeah, against absolutely. England they would have fallen behind yeah. England had the far more revered players they had three or four international full international caps everybody mm. put France had some but guy rather, 20 grand a month but rather that's when they dug in that's when we talk about as I said the intangibles the resilience the determination the grit that is what's made this team special mm. yes there's skill there yes there's talent no. that's obvious mm. tonight is a, um, almost a big <laughs> I'm glad you, you, you put the brakes well, on Because, because the expectation, obviously, they will win the Grand Slam. Mm. They've won the championship. 
And with expectation comes pressure. Mm. And Wales have nothing to lose tonight. They could spoil the party. They'll be very happy to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so the next step, That's the next so. step now. To it's an away fixture in the Six Nations. It is, it's, it's kind of against them in some ways. Yeah. And that all the pressure's on them. They're away from home. And Wales are never bad at under-20s. No. Always have a decent team. So they need to keep their heads tonight. They need to take their chances, as they have been doing. And they may get a punch in the mouth the odd time. Might be, they might make a mistake. But this is a bigger test in many ways than the previous four. I think if they start well... It's vital. Well, it's a help. It's a big help to well, start no, with. Well, yeah. we ditched Holman away because so we want drama, you know. I mean, that's what happened, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we mate. Of, we, but it is the mark, We need a few though, twists and turns. Dara, of where, you know, where this bunch are at, OK? Mm. If they can seal the deal tonight and just get there. And I think we've come a long way as Irish people from being sort of the gallant losers or giving it a go or whatever. That The expectation, and it's right to have that expectation, and they should but deliver on it. But it does bring pressure, is the it point. Does. Yeah. But let's so see let's how, how they, they deal with it. And you don't know how at that age how psychologically it affects you. We don't know that. Yes, they can. They appear a close-knit group. They appear to have a coach, Noel McDermott, that's going to keep the lid on them all week. But that still doesn't stop nerves seeping in on it's the human night. human nature, you know. Yep. If they start look at the well, gadget. I'm telling you, they look like they're they the place. Well and they get points up, then they'll have the wherefore to finish this game off, I believe. Yeah, and great diversity too. I was like two from West Cork, two from Cork, six from Dublin, and uh, Galway, uh, Kildare. There was Limerick, poor Craig Casey's gone. Two from Tip now, including one from Bansha. Well, that's it. And there six is... GAA guys. Yeah, and it's brilliant, and it just shows about playing all sports up to a certain age, you know, before specialising. I presume not many of them are playing the GAA now, you know, so talented they are. Well, it's a fantastic evening to look forward to. It's a sport close to its purest. And uh, we'll go over to Colwyn Bay and rejoin Bernard and first Hugh. Yes, thank you, Dara, and welcome to Parker Ice in Cowan Bay, North Wales. About four and a half hours' drive from Cardiff, as Noel McNamara is on under 20 side so go in search of a Grand Slam Six Nations Championship. The title itself already secure, thanks to that dramatic and brilliant win against France last weekend. But Ireland have a manager clean sweep in this competition since 2007. Wales will be hoping to spoil the Irish party on St. Patrick's weekend. So a dry, mild night in Colwyn Bay so far. The surface is pretty firm as well. Both teams like to throw the ball around, so we should have an open, entertaining contest. Wales come into this on the back of a very disappointing defeat against Scotland, which put pay to their championship hopes, while Ireland, that win against France, kept their run going. And with that, the chance tonight to go in search of a Grand Slam title. The well, atmosphere has uh, been building steadily over the last half an hour or so. They do enjoy the rugby here in North Wales, so much so there's even talk of potentially putting a region into the professional mix. That another day's conversation, though. Before the anthems, we're going to pause first for a minute's silence for the victims of the terrorist attack in Christchurch in New Zealand earlier today. And our thoughts are with all the families of those who lost loved ones. We would ask you to respect the moment of silence. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And to which both teams the very best, please join us in singing the national anthems.
So there we go. Last chance for team discussion before we get into it. And a beautiful night here, as I said, in North Wales for a game of rugby. We have the pitch and the conditions to suit. Well, we start with the Welsh team, and Gar Williams has made seven changes, two positional from the side that lost to Scotland last week. Reese Davis returns to the front row with loose head drop, while Ed Scrag comes into partner Teddy Williams in the second row. In the back, Sam Costello takes over at fly half, with Kai Evans switching to full back, and Johan Davis moving to the wing where he'll form a new look back three with Davis and Tommy Lewis. So that's the Welsh team. What about Ireland? A bit of late drama with the Ireland team as they go in search of that grand slam. Harry Byrne was named at fly half, replacing Ben Healy, who started last week, but he's dropped out, so Healy starts. Craig Casey also failed a late fitness test after picking up that ankle injury against France, so Cormac Foley from St Mary's comes in to start at nine. The pack unchanged for the fifth game in a row, a rare thing in the modern game, a real sign of how tough this Ireland side is. Charlie Ryan once again captains the side in the second row. Well, the late withdrawal then of Byrne and Casey means that scrum half is covered by Colin Riley in the bench and fly half. Ewan Hughes comes on to the bench. Referee, as you've just seen from England, Christoph Ridley. And it is Wales who get us underway playing from left to right. First touch for Johnny Wren. Poor Con Winger. He's had a brilliant Six Nations so far and a first chance for me to say hello to Bernard Jackman. Uh, interesting game tonight, Bernard, in the Grand Slam on offer here. Yeah, it's a huge game for, for this young group of players who've impressed us so much over the last couple of months and great conditions in Ireland. They're looking to show that same attacking flair they showed um, so far. We're running out of our own 22. Yeah, Hodden with the first carry. What a brilliant player he's been as well. At number eight for Ireland. Take tough. It's very rare you get five games in a row where you get to start the same pack. Back to Healy. And I'm sure delighted to get those minutes under his belt against the French last weekend. As well as look for the crossfield kick, and that one's going to bounce into touch inside the Irish 22. I mean, Wales are disappointed to lose to Scotland, but they are better than that performance of Jets, Bernard. Yeah, speaking to their coaches beforehand, they felt uh, um, the players are probably a little bit overconfident going up to Scotland. They hadn't been the same buzz of training in the, in the two weeks leading into it, and they got caught. And um, Scotland do tend to improve as the competition goes on. So Ireland have a very poor record against Wales, and uh, this is a big test for us. So first line outs. And a chance for Dylan Cherney Martin to throw. Doesn't quite work out, though, straight into the arms of Dowie Lake, the captain from the Ospreys, and the hooker takes the tackle about eight metres short of the Irish line. There once again for Buckland. Plenty of runners and forwards outside him. This time going to use the back line. Costello looks to find his inside centre, but Owen can't quite get away. The Dragons, number 12. Tackled, though, is Thomas Wheeler. And back for a scrum half. Carry this time from Morgan. And Reese into secure possession. Ireland just having to defend early on here. Should be there for Buckland. Standing deep outside him. Quick hands from Owen. Lovely hands as well to the fullback Evans. Dragged to the ground by Healy. And he's five metres short of the line. Lewis with a pop on the outside. Again, Owen. This time dumped by Ren into touch. And Ireland survived the first attack. Yeah, very good um, attack from, from Wales. Obviously getting on the front foot from the from the line out that's just slightly overthrown and into the hands of Dowie Lake, who's really highly rated. And we just see Ireland using the touchline here. Good hands from Wales, but um, an iron owned young dragon centre. He, he can't flirt with the touchline that much, and Ireland get, get away with it. Much better line out, second time out as well. Foley just has to take the tackle. Wren carries into contact. Healy standing quite deep, left footed strike, but they couldn't do a huge amount with that, could he? No, we got into a bit of trouble there. The ball was tapped back, so um, Foley had to take the ball into contact, and then Jonathan Wren took a little phase. But the dead ball area is very narrow, so no real time for, for Healy to get his clearance kick away, and uh, Wales get another chance to have a tackle Ireland. So Dowie Lake to throw. Clean ball, good rip as well. Trying to set them all, and now Ireland give away the penalty, so advantage being played by the referee. We're going to have a shot here. Back with Yeston Reese. Slips it off to Williams, but the whistle's gone, no advantage coming. So interesting to see what they try and do here. I mean, the championship gone for Wales now, so why not go into the corner? 
yeah, they, they definitely want to get some um, scores on the board and ideally a try from this early period of dominance. He saw Ireland in the last line, I tried to sack it, uh, which is legal, but you got to sack it before the mall is formed and unfortunately you got our timing a little bit off, so dangerous position here for, for Wales. Lake has been spot on, this time to go to the front, Ireland don't even contest, in fact, no jump in the second row. And now the crowd on their feet, roaring the pack on as they try and find a weak spot. Not a bad effort, but Ireland get a shove back towards the five-meter line. Buckland trying to dig one out. And he goes short. Davis can only take the tackle. Ireland up really quickly. Back with the hooker, Lake. And the Ospreys man runs straight into Witcherly. Two tries against France, but he's having to defend here. Another carry. Thomas supporting his shoulder as well. Now they're going to go out wide. Costello delayed the pass beautifully. Thomas Wheeler. Ireland making those first-time tackles. They have to. Well inside their own 22. Again, quick hands from Costello. Doesn't quite find his winger, Johan Davis. The Cardiff man just couldn't get control of that ball. Yeah, Ireland are living on the edge a little bit. It's been a poor start from us um, in terms of field position. We see Kernan come in there and Jake Flannery come in and, and left the last man. And um, you know, Unfortunately for Wales, they're handling letting down. Ireland with the scrum they've been really solid throughout the championship so far it's a piece particularly in the scrum as well they've come up against bigger packs we saw it against England we saw it against France as well but they haven't taken a backward step and it's been a, an area I know that Noel McNamara and his team have been proud of let's see what the Welsh can manage here it's gone down on the far side Yeah, this part of the field, the bottom right-hand corner, it's known as Coffin Corner in, in rugby. It's very hard to get out of Ireland, pinned Wales, uh, or sorry, France last weekend in that corner for most of the first half. So I'd imagine Ireland will, will knock up a centre here, try and open up some space for, for Healy to get some distance on his kick. So let's see what the front row are made of. It's Witcherly, Tierney Martin and Clarkson once again. We've got McKee, Reid and Lomas on the bench for Ireland. So Foley defeats, doesn't get the chance, it's gone down and Wales give away a penalty, that's another one on the scrum stop book for Ireland. Yeah, the best possible way of exiting is, is to win a penalty on a set piece and I'm thinking back to the, the England game where we were under all kinds of pressure and we won a penalty in, in that bottom right hand corner at a key moment and it just shows how strong our set piece has been, how well drilled we are. See, he went straight down as well. Against Reese Davis. So Healy tries one off the outside of the boots, finds touch, but not a huge amount of distance gained, and he didn't strike it as well he would have liked, but Ireland will have the put into the line out. So Tony Martin to throw. Go to the back. Really good take for Murray, but no, that's an unforced error. Maybe a little bit of nerves given what's at stake here, Bernard. Yeah, definitely just a little bit sloppy. That's the second line of ball has been been tapped back in a, um, in a badly controlled way, and there's no real pressure there. Definitely, we're better now. We haven't seen that in any of the other games. Our set piece quality ball has been has been excellent, and uh, you know Foley's coming into the team. He, he's a very talented player, but our forwards need to give him better service than that. I did wonder when Craig Casey went down against France last weekend whether he's going to be okay with the short turnaround back-to-back -back games but obviously not he was picked in the original starting 15 along with Harry Byrne who missed last weekend neither of them fit to play though it's, it's obviously disappointing not to have the players of, of, of Casey and, and Harry Byrne's quality tonight but in terms of looking towards the World Cup you know this is a brilliant opportunity for Foley and, and Healy to get you know game time uh, from a start and um, you know try and be part of winning winning this competition or winning a Grand Slam tonight so, David Buckland to throw. 
Or defeat, I should say. The Dragon Scrum Half. Do you know an awful lot yeah, about him, Bernard? He's a young kid with the, the, the Sub Scrum Half, is a fellow called Dan Babos, who was actually the first millennium to play in the Pro 14. So, two very young, um, talented Dragons at uh, Scrum Halves who, who play high tempo. Neither of them are very big, but uh, they put pace on the game. Reese switched the point of attack nicely as well. Davis with quick feet, but it had lost it. And John Hodnett manages to get his hand on the ball. Another pass doesn't quite find the man, but. It's okay for Ireland. Foley to Healy. Ireland going to run this from well inside their own 22. They know we've got bags of pace in that back line. But Flannery can't quite hold that ball. Penny. Tierney Martin. Tackle by Owen. Back to Foley. Again, Healy swings the boot at it. It's going to find touch, but Wales camped inside the Irish half for the first few minutes of this game, putting pressure on. Yeah, that's a better clearance from um, from from Healy. But in fairness, I think Ireland off turnover ball. They're looking to go wide to see is there any opportunities. But the Welsh defence has been able to readjust quite quickly, and um, they look very well drilled, very well organised. And we haven't really made any any ground ball in hand. So potentially look at, at exiting a little bit quicker and um, getting the pack a little bit further up the field. So like. Goes to his number eight, Jesson Reese, when the score is, takes it down. And again, Wales set that mall. Ireland with a little defending to do here. And committed everybody to try and slow this down. And they've done a pretty decent job as well, Buckland. Rolling behind. Look how quickly Ireland get off Turner, particularly off the line there, but it's come loose to Evans. And Evans on his outside to Tommy Lewis and the scoring swinger from around the outside. Pass back in. It's a good one. And Owen goes in. The Dragons inside centre gets the first score of the game. Yeah, Ireland high risk approach in defence. They're, they're not a, using up and out defence. They're looking to jam in and try and shut it down. And, you know, when that works, you catch them behind the gain line. But in fairness to Wales, the Welsh back line, their skill set um, stood up to the task and they got the ball away. You see it here. Ireland come in, don't stop the ball. And then there's a huge amount of space. There's 30 metres here. Get the ball to the white. The divine is very quick. Takes Flannery on the outside. And then this kid in Iron Owen, he's only 18, but highly regarded in the Dragons. They, they believe he'll, he'll go on and play for, for Wales. Uh, can play 10 12. But, uh, you know, great bit of pace here and great support on the inside. And Ireland, as I said, risky defence and, and get caught. Well, Owen at the heart of the start of that move there, but found himself following over to support and in the right place to get the pass back inside. I say Flannery did have the measure. Well, the inside centre unmarked and in he goes 5-0 perfect start for Wales and they deserve it yeah we've just been a little bit off and um, you know, hopefully we settle down now from the kick off get down into the Welsh 22 and start to build some pressure so Kai Evans hasn't missed a kick in the championship fly half by trade but he's picked a full back here to allow Sam Costello in and he continues his brilliant record with the boot 7 points to nil now Wales lead and really it's uh, no more than they deserve for the start of the night some great handling there from the Welsh backs and um, you know Tommy Lewis is, is very quick another scarlet winger who's uh, got a huge amount of pace and very very dangerous so Ireland restarts I'm sure relieved to be out of their own half and they're 22 they spent most of the first of the 10 minutes or so but a touch found Aaron this time will get the put into the line just about settling things down now because they know they've got more than enough ability to get back into this game and there's loads of time to do it Bernard but maybe just not used to being in this position inside 10 minutes or so barely touching the ball yeah we haven't thrown a punch yet and there's definitely no need to panic you know the, the panellists spoke before about the resilience of this team and how they've been behind and never really panic so interesting to see if we can step up away from home we go back to the England game in Ireland where was it 11-0 down early on but managed to call their way back into it a couple of tries Nice rip from Maloney to Cheney Martin. Trying to go straight through the cover tackle. A lot bigger than Johan Davis, but the winger did well to put him down. Foley. And Lakin to make that hit. And the Irish captain, Charlie Ryan, just presenting the ball. Did the kick over the top. Healy chasing it. It's not a bad kick, just forcing. Wales back inside their own 22. Was that a high tackle attempt from Healy? It was, referee's hand is out. Still a little bit sloppy and lazy, but he had half. 
Yeah, I'm lucky from Healy because it was a brilliant kick. He's kicked, he kicks with both feet, just found a little space in behind. And the ideal scenario there was the ball stayed in field and was a chance for us to pick up the, the Welsh full back and throw him out so we'd have an attacking lineup. But he just, uh, the seatbelt tackle as, as he dipped underneath, and Wales get a chance to exit now with, uh, with a lineup to come. Again, it's Kai Evans. Get every ounce on that one. Brings almost to the halfway line. And Wales would have the put in. Here was the kick. It was a good idea and it was really well executed. Just a lazy tackle, if you like. Yeah, great kick, good chase. Just unfortunately here, just in fairness, Evans dip, dips a little bit, but you got to be whiter than white there. Referees have picked it up all day. Not a decent line at this time. Scrag with the take. Ball on behind from the try score. Wren. In fact, it wasn't. It was Sean French who came up, but it just went forward in the art of trying to make the tackle. And Wales are looking to move this at every opportunity. Yeah, Wales are looking to move in Ireland. Have, have used the same defence again there. A high risk. They come up, start from out to in. And uh, unfortunately, just as the pass is being made, just gets his hand hand in the way and it's a knock on but definitely we can make some impact tackles with that as long as we get our, our line speed right and uh, we, we stop that ball getting around us because we are very narrow Jack Morgan is Gone in number eight of the scrum with seven on his back. Comes out from Owen. Kernan makes the tackle. Bucklands to Thomas. But it was just over that halfway line. See Maloney trying to make a news of himself there, but all pretty secure at the back of the rook. And again, Buckland taking. Just the extra couple of seconds or so. Make sure his technique is right. Mark's called by Flannery. The atmosphere is really dead here, Hugh. And that must be a little bit weird for these players because last last week in Cork it was phenomenal. The pace was hopping. Wales have had a great start. They've scored a try, you know, the seven nil up, and um, it's like a training run. I uh, think everybody can hear you and I talking to be quite honest with you. That'll tell it's you how the atmosphere is. <laughs> Ireland have managed over 30 points in three of their four games so far. The lowest tally was 24 against Scotland in pretty awful conditions. And they've averaged 31 per game. Wales down around 20 points a match so far. So on that basis, we should have plenty to keep us entertained. Maybe something for the crowd to get in on this one. Reece Davis just giving instructions to his hooker. Short line out cold. And up goes Williams. Well, Ireland have the option here. Going to go for the scrum. Yeah, I think it's a wise decision. Our, our line has been a little bit sloppy. Wales are getting good um, pressure in the air. And just see that the second time around. It's a free jump, but just comes down the, um, the Welsh side and good call by the referee. But be interested to see if we can get more dominance here. Last time, Clarkson you know, had Reese Davies in all kinds of trouble. So if you could milk a penalty from this, we Get it, gives a chance to get into their 22 or you know, potentially we see a, a, a back strike attack here because um, it's a nice area to field to attack from. See Turner and French have switched. Turner's gone to inside centre. We know how quick French is. Obviously he plays in the wing for Corcon. A lot scored a couple of tries in the league two weeks ago and Ireland get the penalty from the scrum. It's the second scrum penalty that Wales have given away. Yeah, sloppy by Wales there. They're trying to put big pressure up on the on the loose head side, but they, they run around the, the tight head and uh, um, you know, definitely a penalty, and this could be the, the spark we need, entry point into into the Welsh half to, to get ourselves into the game. So Healy drills one into the 22, that's a good kick, and it gives Ireland the line out. Perfect chance to strike back here. Just see referee Christoph Ridley having a word with Reese Davis, that's two penalties given away. That was the second one. Up goes Ryan. Ball secured for Ireland at the back with Tierney Martin. Four tries and 520 caps, Tierney Martin, including 
three in this championship campaign. And a little break there as well from Penny. Lovely feet as well from the open side. Foley trying to get to the five metre line. He's done so. Back with the captain, Ryan. Here's Witcherly, who got two against the French last weekend. Ireland close now to that Welsh try line for the first time in the game. Penny, another big drive. Can he get there? That ball's down. Did it touch the try line, though? The referee's whistle's gone. I think I'm going to go to the TMO. It looked to me on first instinct, Bernard, like he got there. Yeah, I am. Um, from first first look, it looked like Penny got there, and he's he's a master in that area. He's so strong physically and um, very hard to stop. I think he reached out and got the ball down. So just watch Scott Penny there. The leg drive, gets that ball out. Did it touch the white line? This is probably the best angle you're going to see. Anywhere on the white is a try. TMO, though, has to be certain that it did get there. I think we'll see it better from this angle. One, two. Trying to stop Scott Penny. A couple of tries in a Leinster jersey, of course, already this yeah. season. Did he get there? That's on the line, isn't it? Yeah, he could end of the ball's on the line. Should be a try. Nothing wrong with the grounding. Downward pressure. Yeah, we just just run this last shot. Well, they're going to say yeah. it's short. Well, there we go. No try given. Agree. No evidence of a grounding. Okay. No try. From yeah, I think. I think there was definitely a little bit of the ball on the, on the line there, but um, having said that, best bit of play from Ireland. We, we got a broke out from the mall from Penny. You know, when he fed that ball to Foley, I thought he's feeding another back row. The size of Foley is really, really big and athletic and powerful. He got us into the five metre channel, and then from there, our forwards all the tournament have been very effective in terms of that pick and go with the latch. So um, we missed that opportunity, but uh, I'd like to think that we could score from here. So. Scrum for Ireland, five metres from the line. Foley looking for the instructions from Healy and the back line. Flannery standing right behind the scrum. So split back line for Ireland here. Shouldn't be a problem. Securing possession, Foley has a little half break. And then French reaching for the line. It looked like he lost it as well. We're going to go upstairs. My first impression total was that it was a knock-on from French. Grounding, so my on-field decision is try, but I want to check that he wasn't short first. OK. Check His on-field decision is a try, so let's have a look at this. We're not on the same wavelength as referee, certainly I'm not so far tonight. Let's have a look and see that he managed to hang on to it. He has control of it there. Just reaching out. There's a try, is it? Did that touch the line? I think that one's short. Great effort. Great scramble. It's as close as the last one. Let's see with the TMO. On field decision is a try, though, the referee said. So that's the difference in the question to the TMO. If the on field decision is a try, is there any reason why he can't give it? Stuart Terry just. Having a look to see. Just going to get the end on picture for you. Here we go. Do they make contact? So the PA announcer is asking the Welsh crowd, do they think it was a try or not? And you can guess their answer. Yeah, it looks short there, to be honest. A huge effort from. But if Scott Penny's one was short, that's short. Yeah. That's that's less obvious. The only thing is the referee had said on field decision try, so we're here now. Absolutely correct. Yeah, it's a knock on. No try. Knock on. That was my first impression, I have to say, but shake of the heads from the Irish fans that are here. And no try for Ireland or for Sean French. Yeah, those two, those two uh, non-tries probably uh, sum up kind of how we've been. We've been a little bit off so far, and I definitely think we just need to get a score, whether it's three points, just to settle us into the game. But, uh, um, you know, it shows what the likes of French can do, what Penny can do. They're so powerful. Um, they're able to get over the game line, but we just need to finish it off. Ireland putting pressure on again from the scrum. This time, 
Not driving straight. And the penalty goes to Wales. Show yeah. relief for the front row there. Yeah, that was the worst scenario for us. Just got a little bit um, over anxious and over keen to make something big happen, having obviously not capitalised on those two opportunities. And we gave the same penalty away that the Wales did by trying to run around the tight head side and in, a, in a very rapid movement. And I said referees picked that up very quickly. So it's Kai Evans who goes for touch. Huge amount of experience at this level. Involved with the squad last year, right through the World Championships as well. And he'll be in Argentina in the summer. As Dowie Lake prepares to throw. They'll survive the first Irish attack. And they'll lead by seven points to nil. That one wasn't straight, it was right in front of us here. Mistake by the hooker. The line has been flawless for Wales so far, but that one wasn't straight, so Ireland gets... I presume they'll go for the scrum. Yeah, that could be the um, the way into the game for us. You know, we have a very dominant scrum on our ball so far, and um, the line has been 50-50, to be honest, but just want to see us play some rugby now in, in, in this area of the field and start to build build some phase and get the likes of Hodden into the game. He's a key man for us, um, getting us over the game line. Uh, Penny and Maloney have been seen seen already, and both have different had different actions either side of the ball, but I like see Hodden have maybe a back row move here, get him off the, off the scrum going into the Welsh 10. So he back to the scrum half, takes it one hand and thought about giving the pass to Flannery. He was running a straight line up the middle, but probably the wise option not to do that. Turn her in to try and secure possession there for Penny. Back to the scrum half and gives it to Hodnett. It's tackled well though by Jack Morgan. And the kick really. Question what is it the right option? Certainly the well, seem to have plenty of cover in the back three, but Fanny's there to touch down, 22 metre drop it. Yeah, we lost that battle obviously in kick tennis there, and um, you know we're, we're back on our 22 now, and probably have to try and kick long and invite the Welsh back on us. So um, definitely to be a little bit more accurate in our kick, kicking game. Healy goes for distance, taken by Costello. In his first start for Wales, for Leicester number 10. Launches the Gary Owen, should be there to deal with, but that's just symptomatic of Ireland at the moment. They're just that little bit off what we know they can do, and a knock on against Jake Flannery. Very unlike the Shannon man, but Ireland you know, just looked that little bit nervous out there. Yeah, Healy had done brilliantly to, to find space from that 22 dropout. He turned the Welsh um, defence and sent the, the Welsh number 10 backwards together which gave us uh, an opportunity but unfortunately we've, co- we've had too many unforced errors and that's just you know, another, another example Flannery's been an excellent player in, the, in this tournament just probably had too much time there and uh, was thinking about his next action before he actually caught the ball well, He's not the biggest Sam Costello but it was a very effective kick as well and there's no wind out there so it should have been a handy one for Jake Flannery to deal with and as you mentioned he's been really solid under the high ball for most of the championship so far. Yeah, there's definitely a bit of nerves. This is a huge uh, challenge for this team of the high of last weekend, um, you know, beating a, 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 um, a much, I suppose, publicised uh, French team in terms of their strength, world champions, and having to get up for an away game here, Colwyn Bay, difficult place, so there's no atmosphere. They're playing for a grand slam. There's huge pressure on them, um, and they've got to be able to deal with that. So, Daffod Buckland then. Kai Evans standing to the right of the scrum, as you can see. Ireland, I'm sure, try and put pressure on here. Definitely having the better of the exchanges at scrum time. Tony Martin in your picture there. I mean, amazing to think he only converted to hooker last year. He was a seven, but told he was that little bit too short to make it as a pro and switched to hooker. Yeah, he's, it's, a, it's an incredible rise because um, he's been brilliant for... for at the, at this team in this competition and to, trans- to have that transition so quickly within one year is phenomenal he's obviously worked incredibly hard you know at the at the basics of the game set piece because he's very dynamic and loose until he hasn't done a, a bad job at scrum time either here the Irish front row the Irish tight five just completely dominating the opposition at scrum time at the moment Ben Warren that time feeling the wrath of the referee's decision and Ireland chance to get out of their own half once again here just about settling down, isn't it? Just relaxing a little bit, maybe. Just trying too hard at the moment. Yeah, and I mean, 
we have we have one area where we're utterly dominant. That's the scrum, and uh, that should hopefully settle us down. We see to tidy up our our line out. You know, when we take it down and drive, our more looked um, quite formidable there. It's just been off the top. We just haven't had a delivery as accurate as we needed to be. See, so Witchley all over Ben Warren there, and the tight head just struggling at the moment. Was that one straight? Referee says play on, continues, and Healy to Hardness. Crashes up the middle, back to Foley. Healy in again in behind. Ran off his wing, and he's chopped down. Ireland trying to recycle quickly, just pick up the tempo a little bit. Scott Penny taking two to bring him down. Ellis Thomas just going low, but a support from his number eight. All Hodnett almost got through there, just couldn't hold on to that ball. Advantage being played, and it's kicked ahead for Tommy Lewis to chase. And Lewis, first to react to it. He's five minutes from the line. Did that one go forward? Looked like he just dropped it. Now referee says play continue. That one definitely went forward. And Ireland scrambling back. we to get a chance to clear here. For Wales, almost out of nothing. Healy swings the boot, finds touch. Almost out of nothing, Bernard. Yeah, well, it's just an unforced error again from us. At least, you know, we're trying to take the ball on the gain line. We see Hodnett here. He's probably through half, half a gap if he catches that. But really well spotted. It's a mismatch here. We spoke about Tierney Martin. He has to try and work back. Foley makes a great tackle um, and we, we get out of jail here if they if their Welsh handle is a little bit better they probably score in the corner but um, you know it's, it's definitely a, a lucky escape for us so like the captain goes short again once more though it's not straight and referee very quick to blow the whistle Ireland have the choice again you can see a bit of a, a wry smile from Dowie Lake but no doubt about it yeah, that's the third not straight for, for Wales and um, at line-out time I think we've had three penalties at scrum time so um, you know we've had a lot of soft possession and you know we're, we're seven points down so it shows you the amount of errors we've made not to be able to capitalise on, on all that possession So 25 minutes gone Wales with the only score of the game so far Owen with the try a lead by seven points to nil Ireland have had a couple of chances just haven't been able to put the whole package together and get over that line they've been inches short millimetres even Ireland lock out the scrum Paul with Hodden at the back and number 8 trying to break away Tackle by Buckland. There for Foley to Healy. Takes it on himself. Brought down by Reese. Back with Foley. Witcherly. Little step. Tackled by Warren. The Welsh tight head on and get the penalty. Yeah, again, we're, we're playing playing our own 22. Um, and we don't look like we're gonna, we have the the shape to get around them in this part of the field. So a um, little bit frantic from Ireland, probably looking to get a, a penalty there. And hopefully we can build on that now from um, from, from this line. So, line out to Ireland on the halfway line. Score would settle them right down, you feel. Got to win the line out first. A little bit scrappy comes back on the right side though. Down goes Clarkson. Murray leaves it for a scrum half. Hodnett, another carry. Straight into contact and almost at the halfway line. Hill's trying to get up quickly just to cut off the supply. Ireland options both sides here and give away the penalty, not releasing on the ground. Wales in on top of that ball. And again. It's just not happening for Ireland at the moment. Yeah, Wales are, are sensing that Ireland's clean out isn't as aggressive as um, it maybe has been, and are starting to have a look at the jackal threat. And uh, they're starting to get in there and slow the ball down. Our ball carriers aren't really getting over the gain line. Our, our cleaners aren't creating that go forward, and um, we're just caught a little bit in limbo um, without creating any opportunities for our outside backs who we know are very dangerous. Ireland just hanging on against Charlie Ryan there. Referee. Doing his best to warn Ireland, but 
The result of that is a penalty Wales and Toy Evans to have a shot at goal. One from one so far. The conversion from Owen's try just to make it 10 points to nil. But he's almost at that halfway line. It's a long way out. Needs a decent strike. Clearly feels like he has the range. He does for distance. And that's a brilliant kick. Ten points to nil. Wales stretch their leads. So Zion looks on. He might be pretty happy with that. Well, that's his, uh, is that um, he's a he's a cr incredible kicker. That's his uh, eight conversion or eight pen or eight kick in a row. Uh, oh, sorry, he's kicked eight conversions of five five penalties in a row. Yeah, how was that on his dad wasn't as good as that anyway. His dad was a... <laughs> Maybe a bit quicker, <laughs> but... A lot quicker, a great player. But they have big hopes for Kai Evans. They, they expect him to become a senior international. Quick line out taken for Ireland. Foley. Nice little break by the scrum half. No scrum half there, though, for Ireland, so... Pass the penny. Just over that 10-metre line. Referee again penalising Ireland for not releasing on the ground yeah so there's another example just not getting the right numbers to, to the breakdown or, or being as effective as we need to be we're not working hard enough on the ground and um, given the, the Welsh players the second defender in an opportunity to get on it and um, giving the referee a really bad image and circle penalty that's not a bad kick either brings play right inside the Ireland 22, so half an hour played and uh, Wales with the only points on it. It'd be interesting to see how Ireland cope with this burn because you know the games up to now have been kind of free flowing, there's a lot of loose play, which has suited Ireland given the pace that they have, but this is a bit of a, a battle up front at the moment and when mistakes are creeping into it, it'll be interesting to see how they respond. Yeah, and, and Wales aren't giving us any of that turnover ball or transition ball, they've been very uh, methodical in how they've been building into the game and um, we've struggled with that. Chance to crash up the middle, Tian Thomas Wheeler, Ospreys outside centre. Again, Wales recycle. This time it's Owen. And Stika run to Evans and out to the winger. Lewis with a grubber kick through. Lewis chasing it. It's just got to go too far for him. Nice play by the Welsh back line. Yeah, really good. They're really comfortable playing into that um, that blitz defence. Um, being able to chop their feet and get the ball to the outside and giving their, their outside wings one-on-one -on -one opportunities and smart kick through there. Ford just runs out of, runs out of space because he definitely has the wheels. Ireland just scrambling to get across and then just too much on the kick. Wren lost his feet as he went to challenge there, but looks like, is it Hodnett who's getting a bit of attention? Yeah, Hodnett just got a bang. You just saw him there. He was in the defensive line. A Welsh player ran a decoy line and seemed to clash into his shoulder. And Hopefully he's okay because um, we need him, given that, that we're struggling a little bit. We just need the simple things done well. And he's, he's capable of just getting us over the game line. Very, very aggressive. Ball car. And he's back on his feet. Good to see and Ireland take the 22. There for Costello. It's the pass away to Owen, the try score. And back to Bucklands. Again, flat pass from Costello to his captain, Lake, over the halfway line. Wales recycle. Costello again, almost intercepted him with a hand attempt from Ireland, breaking the line to get up quickly. Doing to Wales what they've been doing to Ireland every time that ball's gone out. This is Williams, six foot six, Cardiff second row. Warren in to protect the ball. And Buckland in no rush to use this one. Fox kick from the scrum half. Flannery perfectly placed. Eyes on the ball this time and trying to use his pace to get away from the first tackle. Does so, but not the second. Jack Morgan putting him down. Foley. Wren straight into Williams Murray Foley back to Healy and his pass back in so he couldn't go straight into touch Buckland goes in field to Kai Evans and the full back can't get past Penny good tackle by the open side he got up well as well to put pressure on the Welsh full back Witchley this time trying to rip the ball from Lake's hands. The hooker did well. Murray in. Back on his feet. Referee warning him. Costello puts it in behind. That one go out on the full. 
He did, you know. Yeah, right idea from, from the 10. Thought he could find space behind the Ireland defensive line was well in, was well in place, particularly the front line. Um, but unfortunately, just overkicked it a little bit and gives a chance to have a line out in the halfway. But you can see Ireland from that box kick. Flannery could have actually marked that, but he's just trying to put a bit of pace in the game to get us into our shape. But the Welsh defence is, um, is very well organised. So Tony Martin just told to step on to the mark. Irish line out, Hodnett standing at first receiver just ahead of Ben Healy and there he is little dummy, nobody bought it, leg makes the tackle gets to the halfway line there for Foley, trying to inject a bit of tempo fires that pass out, Healy goes cross field with the kick, Wren chasing it a brilliant cover by Evans and he gets the kick away Flannery underneath it save pair of hands from the fullback, looking for a bit of space to move into. It's tackled just over the halfway line. Foley just lost his feet as well. As French, not a bad kick. Yeah, first bit of really tactical kicking from both sides, where it's gone back and forth, back and forth, and we obviously won that battle, forcing the Welsh team back into their own 22. But um, Healy, just the fact he can kick off both feet makes it so difficult for the for the backfield of of the Welsh team and you know Kai Evans is really good at reading a really quick cross the ground there but um, he's that's a massive skill set that he he has which is going to be a huge advantage to him going forward that wasn't straight either surely and backwards as referee or did it go forward from an Irish hand his hand is out anyway and apologies we don't have a, a ref link here at the moment so we're just going to have to hazard a guess as his backward Costello doesn't quite get the strike on it. Here's Wren. Trying to go around Lewis. The captain Charlie Ryan. Foley. To Healy. Again, goes crossfield with the kick. Marcus called. And a chance for Wales to get outside of the 22. A lot for the coaches to work on, you think, at half time. I mean, we've got five minutes left to play, but uh, if Ireland could score before the half time break, it would be a massive boost them, given that they haven't been at all 100%. No, they haven't been, and they're trying to find ways of unlocking the Welsh defence. You see, you saw Healy there both times trying to find that space in behind the right wing, first of all, and the left wing, because they feel like they've been suffocated. There's so many players in the, in the front line, but the Welsh wings are doing a good job of actually being up high and then getting back, covering those kicks. So, definitely an opportunity at half time to. Uh, to try and, I suppose, problem solve. And, you know, the coaches spoke so much about how being shared shared leadership and shared decision-making and find a way of, of breaking down this Welsh defence. Charlie Ryan wins the line-outs. Healy, flat pass to Hodnett, who's absolutely smashed in the tackle by Morgan. He seems to have uh, earmarked out Hodnett pretty well because every time he's got the ball, he's been hit by one, if not two, Welsh defenders. Evans... Well, I thought Healy was going to put the hands in the air for that one, but what a kick that is by the full back. Healy saying it went dead, but the assistant referee on that far side doesn't agree, and it's going to be a line to Ireland on the five metre line. Yeah, an amazing kick again. The key man for, for Wales so far has been Evans, and you know he finds that space in behind Healy and gets a great bounce. But uh, disastrous from, from the Irish backfield point of view to let that go in and, and you know force it back onto the five metre line. No, I think it was the right call by the assistant referee there. And Healy, I wonder, could he have taken that? Should he have gone for it? Yeah, I think he could have taken and saved it. He had time. It was such a long kick that he would have had time to scramble before the Welsh defence got on top of him. But he took the risk. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big setback for Ireland. we will be looking now at three minutes left to get out of here without conceding another score. Codden's down getting a bit of treatment he's he's hit, chipped a few heavy hits I think definitely one of the things they'll be talking about half time is using him as a decoy from those set piece um, line out plays because they are sitting down for him um, there's two men coming in to tackle him I think that would create a little bit of space on the outside yeah they've done their homework on John Hodden so far this Welsh team and Kai Evans perfectly judged kick Healy was complaining but measured it to perfection the Welsh full back and it's his penalty and a conversion from Owens try early on that has them 10 points ahead of Ireland very little has gone right and you just wonder is Hodnett going to be able to continue it's the second time he's had to get medical treatment 
And as you say, if they use him as a more of a decoy, there might be space in opening up for other players. Yeah, listen, he's, he's a go-to guy for Ireland, get, you, get him over the game line, but definitely from from those lineups, those short lineups where he's the, the main ball carrier off 10, there's been a lot of heat on him, which you know means there's probably some space for other players, particularly some of our backs in the wider channels, and um, I think it's definitely something we can look look at in the second half. This was the Welsh try for an Aaron Owen. Well worked, good support line by the inside centre, and you get your just rewards if you're prepared to work hard for your teammates. Doesn't always happen, but it did on that occasion. And the Irish medical officials leaving the pitch. Looks like Hodnett back on his feet and okay to continue. Ireland need to win this line out. They do so. Murray. And here is Hodnett again. He's got uh, the old tissue up the nose as well just to stop the bleeding from that last hit. Foley back to Healy. Under pressure. Swings the boot. Finds touch. We'll take that. Yeah, it's a good kick under pressure. Just brings it up just inside the 22. But I think we need to be better in terms of our blockers. Um, there's a lot of heat on his right foot there. Um, so the pod who, who won the ball on the line, they should take a position on his right foot basically to stop the Welsh defenders getting pressure on and we can maybe get another 10 yards on that kick so a couple of minutes left at the end of this first half we've been a bit uh, spoiled with the quality of the Irish performances over the last four rounds it's the first 40 minutes really where they've struggled and again no challenge there as Penny comes through with an arm and manages to hang on to the ball another malfunctioning Wales line out can Ireland capitalise from here? A score before half time will be just what they need to get back into this game and give the coaches something to build on. And just as I say, they lose the ball. Costello pass on the outside to Thomas. Thomas still on his feet, eventually brought down. There for Buckland. Reese this time. Quick recycle ball for the scrum half to use. Scrag to his loose heads turnover ball chance for Ireland to counter-attack Healy popped up nicely for Flannery and the ball on the outside now Kernahan trying to get away lovely change of direction and stepping off his right still going Angus Kernahan good tackle by Evans to bring him down Ireland just outside the Welsh 22 oh lovely feet Flannery where's that ball a little bit slower to come back for Foley Tierney Martin to Healy Turner, French to Penny, supporting his outside if he needs it at the pass, had gone there to Wren, Wren back inside for Ireland, Jonathan Wren scores Ireland's first try of the game it's taken 39 minutes but what a boost that will be going into the halftime oh, that's huge from Ireland, I mean given a, made a few errors in her own half but once we got the opportunity a little bit of space on the outside, Kernan showed incredible speed take his man on the outside break 40 50 yards down and then we had to wear it all to get it wide to penny in the outside channel and he, he broke the tackle and a one-handed offload it was, a, it was a great score for ireland it was a break here. yeah brilliant and we've been looking for that you spoke about the fact that the game hasn't really been frantic and loose and when it does break into this transition rugby that's when we come to life because we've got such good ball players who can attack space and that's exactly what kernahan did to set up the try for the opposite winger Jonathan Wren finishing it off Kernahan the catalyst and Wren the finisher yeah we just see Wales are obviously a bit disorganised because it's from turnover Penny does brilliantly here he rides a challenge gets the ball away and then the drift defence has corner flag too much and there's space back on the inside what a time to strike for Ireland it really has not gone according to plan at all in the first 40 minutes they'll be delighted now to be only three points down as Wales prepare to restart just gone the 40 I'm sure Aaron just boot this into the stand and get back to the change room yeah definitely best idea 10-7's a great return given what's happened in the first half there's Wren takes the kick and he says thank you very much the half time whistle sounds well it has not been vintage Ireland in fact it's been far from a plenty of mistakes plenty to work on for the entire team and the coaches as well but they've managed to pull themselves right back into this game early try from Owen the response from Ren for Ireland means the half time score here in Park at Ias in Cowan Bay is Wales 10 Ireland 7 analysis after the break it's a grand slam decider in Colwyn Bay we're halfway through and Wales lead 10-7 but that doesn't really tell the half of it because Brent Pope Ireland went from being within uh, 
a fraction of being 17 nil down to now. Big marginal favourites at 10-7 back in the match. Absolutely, they probably should have been. If Wales had a decent line out and a decent scrum, they'd be further ahead. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know Wren scored that try. I'd like to have a look at that again. In the dead you think he might have touched in? Yes, goal. I do think yeah. he did. But I mean, look, the conversion's done, and, and it's got Ireland back into the game. Okay, Eddie, take us through the bad start. Well, it's just that Wales go through the hands here, and uh, it's just exceptional it's pace here on the outside from uh, Tommy Lewis. Gets around the outside of of Jake Flannery and gets an inside pass, and it was a kind of it was kind of building for a while. You know, it's, they have it covered, Ireland. They've actually got a one and one out here, and he just gets beaten on the outside, and the ball drops back in. And it's it's simple enough try. You, you expect to use a touch down there and make the tackle, uh, but they didn't. And it was symptomatic of where Ireland were. They were under, they were under the pump for the first 15 minutes, mm. and eventually that was the, the dividend they got out of it. But as Brent said, it could be a lot worse. Yeah, it never looked entirely comfortable. Let's take a look at the Jonathan Wren try. I know um, Brent was referring to the in goal area <laughs> that he might have touched it with his mm. uh, boot. But to mind that. Yeah, I mean this was sort of turnover, turnover, and luckily we got the, the rub of the green literally at the end of it. I mean Penny does exceptionally well here, ball in two hands offloads in the tackle and then Ren just you know, cuts in and uh, this is what we're talking about is that bit of whitewash there Narrow in goal Kernahan area. had done really well you know, to bring it up but again Penny made this try the way he I suppose, drew both defenders onto him the three Welsh lads coming across corner flagging and um, Ren does really really well to step in totally changes the complexion of the game but though. we I mean, needed that because well, we had turned over the ball just inside outside the 22, managed to get it back with some really good defence and then, you know, broke through because uh, we've been turning over too much ball at rugby. We have. Time. Let's take a look when at you, some of those play, errors. When you play poorly and you're just three points behind, yeah. we know this Irish team has resilience. We know they've come back from positions like this before. They'll be a lot happier than, in some regards, going in at that scoreline, as say, rather than being possibly out of the game. But, yeah, uncharacteristics, uh, you know, just playing... Their extra strategy hasn't been good. Rather than settle it down, they are missing uh, Harry Byrne's influences since in game management, I'd have to say, because they've tried to play too much of the play, I'd suggest, Eddie, from, from inside their 22. They've played very deep, Brent, and they've made errors. And they're having to force it, Eddie. They are, but I think the problem the Welsh here is defense looked, is good. the Welsh defence are playing up and in and putting huge pressure. I think we're overusing Hodden as well. He's the main ball carrier in the Welsh know They're chopping him down every time. So we need some variation around Hodden. He'd be a good dummy runner. Uh, but we keep dipping the ball, they keep chopping them down. And it's another loose kick as well. And I think there's a bit of a breeze here that factors into it. You know, the Welsh are getting much more dividends over their kicks. Here's a long kick over the, the head of uh, Jake Flannery. He lets it run and it goes out for a line-out. Yeah. Um, he could have taken that. So it's a, it's a very edgy performance, a lot of mistakes. The only thing is, as I say, Wales can't believe they're only three points ahead. After okay. all, after yeah. dominance. The worst, the, the worst could be over. 10-7, no Wales lead. Second half is live for you after the break. We're okay, before we get back to Colwyn Bay, where it's 10-7 to Wales, Ireland, of course, chasing the slam, uh, three points behind. Will we have a look at those on-field rulings, to use uh, the grammar from NFL? What do we think here, Eddie? First well, one? I think it's hard to say both were tries. Certainly the second one wasn't. This might have been, but they didn't get the call. Um, it's completely against what we're used to this team, you know, keeping their patience and not forcing it. But they felt so much pressure to try to force it. Again here, you know, one metre out, tries to place the ball on a roll around, loses control of the ball, knock on. So they were probably the two best opportunities in the first half. Is that an error from French, though? I mean, he has to go for it. No, I don't think it is. And I think <coughs> the, the point that Eddie's made, we, it took us 15 minutes to get in, into the sure. 22. and then the patience. And, and yeah. then the patience wasn't there like we had talked about beforehand. That's the pressure telling. Yeah. yeah, OK, well, there you go. I mean, my 11-year-old has an app on her phone that can tell whether a ball hits a line or not. But anyway, <laughs> let's go over second half and rejoin Bernard and Hugh. Okay, time on. Thank you, Tara. Perfect timing. And the second half just underway. And I'm sure Ireland plenty to discuss and go through on the basis of what we saw in that first 40-minute performance. But... The good news is they went from being 10 points down with a minute to go before half-time to being three down at the whistle. And certainly there is a lot of room for improvement. First touch for Flannery in the second half finds Healy. Straight into Yeston Reese though. And the score that's number eight puts him down. Foley to Hodnett, who was well marshalled in that first half. Interesting to see how he's deployed in the second. Another Irish back rower with the red scrum cap is Martin Maloney. 
Hasn't been as busy in that first 40 minutes as we've seen from him in the championship so far. And a mistake from Healy out on the fall, gives possession back to Wales. Yeah, but, uh, you know, we're not kicking our own terms. Healy's not kicking on the front foot because our pack aren't getting over the gain line. We played three phases there, which didn't really go anywhere. The ball is slow. There's the, the tackler's in the way, the scrum half, and, and, you know, we just give give possession away. We're at our best when we're playing with high tempo and, um, you know, going from going, going off transition, really. So I would say we kick long early and get into that kick battle, and then when it opens up, go. It's the hint of rain coming down in Parker Ayas and Coleman Bay, but... Nothing to disrupt the players. Ball at the back with Lake. Maloney just been dragged out. He's doing his best to try and get a hand on that ball, and okay, that's some there. serious disruption from him as well. Stop once as the referee. On they go. Wales breaks up this time. Tony Martin told to leave it. And just about does so in time. Buckland to his hooker who dropped the ball. Lake unforced error and gives possession back to Ireland. Yeah, it's a great hit from Penny. Um, Pack were on the back foot a little bit from that line out mall, but eventually we got it to ground. And we just see him here. Makes a great read, great technique, tackles the ball. And uh, that's a massive statement for us because, you know, Derry Lake is a big ball carrier for, for Wales. He's a tallies man for them. So for Scott Penny to. To, to force a turnover from him and hopefully give us all a lift. So it's come to Ireland where they were dominant in the first 40 minutes, the best part of the game, you could argue. Five. Set. Nine. Nine, I just spoke to you. If you raise your arms or shout at me again, I'm going to penalise you. Set an example for the game. Can't to say we're back on the ref mic, so clear instructions there to Daffa Buckland, the Welsh scrum half. If you Come open on. your mouth again, you're going to get penalised. Irish backline a little bit flat at the moment, so let's see what Healy comes up with from here. Maybe Hodden advances a go on the blind side, back to Foley. Little chip attempt, blocked down by Lewis, and ball comes back to Foley, who gets over the halfway line. Tierney Martin, they well to pick them up off the ground, tackled by Williams, and Wells told to roll away. Healy, Flau almost intercepted dangerous pass and Wales up quickly, maybe a little bit forced to get away with that. Yeah, very similar to what we'll see tomorrow in the, in the senior game anything that's halfway slow they'll get massive line speed, particularly when you try and play off 10, you know, that's very nearly intercepted, that's the loose head prop but they, they get great energy out of that, getting off the line together and you know, we either got to play off 9 a little bit more or else get a little bit more depth on us, we don't want to be Given those interception opportunities or getting tackled man and ball. And Reese Davis should have taken that ball and was on a plate for him. No excuse to drop it at this level. Crouch. Boy. Set. Hang on, lads. Hang on, hang on. You've gone to your knee, then you've gone to your elbow, so we're going to reset for stability. Come across. It's a bit of both, isn't it? That's just set and wait. It was interesting talking to some of the, the Welsh coaches. They didn't do a captain's run here yesterday because uh, every time they they train on this ground, they cramp up because uh, the surface so hard. Surface so hard. So, hard. so um, hopefully that'll be an advantage to us. Having been used to playing on, and training on forgery G in preparation for um, the home games, but also we used the base in Donnybrook a lot to train. Five, set. Good set by the Irish front row and the hook as well from Tierney Martin. Hodden it goes left out. Healy. Seven, It'll dink over the top. Evans comes across. Awkward one for the full back. He's not going to have room to move there. Wren got to him first but couldn't hang on to him. Reese. Not now, seven. Man on the wrong side. Good work. Penny told to roll away. 
Buckland setting himself back in the pocket though and it's Costello who's asked to clear and he finds touch but still inside the Welsh 22 yeah great kick from Healy that time off a midfield scrum they manipulated Kai Evans by sending the nine one way had to throw the pass and then you know just building some pressure in that position 22 and now because of that we have a line out in a really good attacking area Ryan goes up, clean take by the captain. Ireland set them all. Ireland go down, and then Tierney Martin goes through. Nice break, but a hooker almost at the line, and he's there, is he? He's convinced it's a try. Referee is going back to check for offside. My on-field decision is try, but green go to ground. I just want to make sure he's onside when he picks it up. So up to the TMO once again. Twice it's been chalked off. Let's see if Tierney Martin gets the benefit of the decision here. Bernard? Yeah, pretty sure the grounding's OK. He's just checking to see if, if he's offside from where he picks it up. So the ball's at the back of this collapsed Check mall here. Offside when he picks the ball up. We're going to sit, need to sit a lot closer than that. He's at the front of the collapsed mall there, so you can see he's got to be at the back foot. Here we go. He's picking it up from the front. I'm not sure it'll be given, to be honest. OK, so... From what that looks like to me, there's no tackle because he's voluntarily gone to ground. He's got back up, he's picked the ball up, and he's. Let's have a look at this angle. Let's see it here. He stood up, picked the ball back up, jumped to his feet, and he scored a try. Are you seeing anything different there? Sure. So, are you are you adjudicating that was not a completed maul? Uh, no, so there was no tackle. The ball carrier has gone to ground voluntarily. He's then let go, stood back up, picked the ball up, which is fine because he's also got feet behind the ball, so he's onside anyway, and then he's grounded the ball, so try. OK, no tackle, no more, try. Correct. There you go. Great start from Ireland. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I agree totally with the referee there. I think there's definitely an argument that that's not... That's a rook or a maul, it's not just a tackle situation, but um, we'll ride that. We had two disallowed in the first half, and uh, this guy can't stop tr scoring tries. Once he once he got the break here, he, he's, he's so dynamic. He, you know, he's still got 50 metres to run here, but um, he, he loses balance there, but gets back to his feet really quickly and really strong at contact and a, and a great score for Ireland. His fifth try in six under-20 international caps. Incredible try scoring record for the hooker. Only recently converted, as he said, from the back row, but it's paying off dividends for Ireland, certainly in this year's championship. And Ireland hit the front for the first time in the game, conversion to come. Difficult angle, really good strike though from Healy, and he likes that one, he really likes that one, and that's why the flags go up 14 points to 10. Ireland four points here now. What a start to the second half. Yeah, it's perfect, but it came from finding that field position. We just see it here again, you know, the line up more. Wales collapses. For me, you know, that, that's very like a rook situation. Uh, but it, I mean, you can't doubt the quality of that finish from there. So, Wales restart. Kernahan. Tackled inside his own 22. Ireland give away the penalty, not releasing and once again three or four times in the first half. That's the first time in the second half. The clear out, holding. Yeah, our breakdown work hasn't been anywhere near as good as it needs to be, and especially if you're going to run from your own 22, you've got to be extra extra clinical at the breakdown there, more aggressive, bodies there quicker, and Wales are winning the race at the moment to get in and get over the ball. Shot and goal. So Kai Evans pointing to the post where he's two from two so far. Yeah, conversion from Owens Troy, penalty as well. This was the penalty was for Bernard. Yeah, we just see the ball carrier there. You know, we don't go past. We we, we don't clear the threat. Who's um, obviously great body position, strong over the ball. The, the Welsh captain um, Dewey, Dewey well, that, Lake, but I think it's been it's been a big issue for us all, all through the first 47 minutes. Is we're not getting there early enough, okay. and we're not blasting past. He's coming off. So Evans then to attempt to knock over. What will be his second penalty of the match? Throw him on straight after the kick and I'll, uh, I'll get the final. All right, get ready to bring on Ryan Baird into the second row.
Well, he's missed it. Would you believe it? That was a rare sight. Kai Evans missing with a shot at goal. 14-10. It's a let off for Ireland. Yeah, massive break for Ireland. Sloppy in terms of their exits. Um, but gives an opportunity now. Baird will come on. He was very impressive last weekend um, in Cork. He's come back from injury. Uh, very, very athletic, very good ball carrier. And hopefully he'll give us a bit of go forward. Yeah, he and Scott Penny straight from school into the Leinster Academy system. He's a bigger guy physically than Niall Murray as well. Yeah, he's a big big athletic guys a lot of St Michael's second rows coming through in the Leinster system and he's another one off the conveyor belt so Ireland restart Costello takes it with a show from the fly half tackle well though on that 10 metre line by Cormac Foley he's a little bit too enthusiastic gives away the penalty yeah he's trying to put pressure on his opposite man Dave Buckland and, um, but unfortunately he he jumps the gun a little bit and tackles him before he has the ball. You can't touch the nine in those situations and a, a soft penalty to give away by Ireland. Well, he's looking to find touch. That's a monster kick. Brings play just inside the Irish five-metre line, well inside the 22, and a line-out possession as well. Yeah, that second try hasn't really uh, settled us. You know, we've been quite sketchy for the last four or five minutes since we scored, and um, we just need to build our way back into the game and make sure we, we cut out those soft penalties that um, are giving Wales field position. You mentioned the cramp there. Just see a bit of a stretch from Kai Evans. Let's see if Lake can hit the line out. Good take from Reese. Equally good throw. Goes down almost straight away. Still connected there, so still a ball. Wales trying to go again. They made a pretty good job with it as well. Ball down just before the five metre line. They're fanning out now. And Buckland looking to hit one. Taken by Williams. Come on now, Green. Buckland again wants to run as the captain, Lake. Curry by the hooker. Shy the five metre line. And they're going to go wide. There they know. Thomas Wheeler stepped back in off his left foot. Nowhere to go, really. First man. Ireland managed to get bodies there on the ground. They managed to get turnover ball as well. Chance to go, Hodness out to the substitute Baird who boots it away and relieves the pressure. Yeah, I love that. No messing around from Ryan Baird. I think Hodden wants us to go wide, but he'd had enough. He's wanted to clear our lines. And another key turnover from Scott Penny. We saw a massive tackle he made on, on Lake earlier on that made him force him to spill the ball. But here we see him as, as a jackal threat, just getting over the ball, very strong, and has has the turnover there, which was key because Wales were getting a little bit of momentum. <laughs> And you see Baird just says enough of that playing inside their own 22 as Wales now bring on three substitutes so Will Griffiths from the Dragons we've got Jack Price as well from the Scarlets coming in fresh legs into the front row and Griffiths First job here will be to try and help his team win the lineup. Yeah, Griffiths is a very good player. He's only 18 again. He's two more years at this level. Um, big expectations. A little bit small, but makes up for it in terms of his attitude and um, his football ability. And Wales don't win the lineup cleanly, so came off a knee as well. Referee says play continue. Healy standing very deep. Carry back over the 22 minute line, so can't go straight into touch. He was just having to reach for that. And number 23 Using the boots back towards Healy. Where's that one going to go? <laughs> 22 minute dropout. Yeah, just some perfection. Some really good long, long range kicking there from Ireland, just pinning Wales back. The other change Wales have made, they brought on a left winger, Ryan Cumbier. Um, he's another scarless player, has been heavily involved with Wales Sevens. Um, has had a little injury in, in the Six Nations so far, but he's very dangerous. He's played Pro 14, and they were trying to get the ball out to him as, as quickly as possible. Evans. Over the 10 metre line. Taken by Carnahan. Probably breaking that first half that led to the Irish try from Jonathan Wren just before the half time break. Wales. Feel like they got hands on the ball, but Ireland do just enough to recycle. In behind from Maloney to Healy. Baird trying to use that big strong hand of his to get free and brings play to the halfway line. Maloney to Hodness. Fenn from the number eight. Tackle attempt, not a particularly good one from Tommy Lewis, but still there for Foley. Tierney Martin. Tackle by Griffiths. 
Little dummy for the Irish scrum half. Again, Ireland have to clear out, and they do so. Witcherly straight into a red brick wall in the shape of Ellis Thomas. Hodden is on the blind side. Breaks the first tackle, not the second. Ireland getting over the game line, though, so it's good to see. Tierney Martin, little dummy, runs into Warren. Back with Foley, Healy this time. Flannery. Turner running across the pitch and French trying to break through. French trying to go around the outside. French with the pass. It's beautiful to Carahan. And Ireland in again. That's the best try of the match so far. Yeah, what a try. What a line from French um, to pierce the, the Welsh defence. Very much on the gain line. But referee is going to have a look at it. The Welsh players are asking the referee to have a look at it, but he seems content. And once he got through there, take his man, take the winger on on the outside and then a one-handed offload. Um, he's something special, I think, French. Brilliant strength, power by the Cork on centre. We just see him here. It's very marginal, very flat, very hard to defend against. Takes his man on the outside, full back, and then what a pass, and easy finish. So. Beautiful offload. I don't think so. Stuart, are you happy? Referee just making sure the TMO. Yeah. I'm going to show you a forward pass. Yep. Time yep. off. Can you run it, please? Stu, you're going to show me a forward pass. I'm going to show you now. a forward pass from 10 to 12. Well, it's 13 to 12, not 10, but let's have a look. You're going to have to have the other angle from, from this one then. If you're going to so it's it. the pass from Turner to go. French, just here. OK, hands gone forward, forward pass, yes? Yes. Forward pass. No try. As I said, it was marginal. Uh, I, I've seen him give him either ways, and unfortunately, the referee, from an Irish point of view, the referee's picked that up. Um, but it doesn't take away from the, uh, I suppose, the attacking intent from French and wanting to play the game right on the game line. And Turner as well. He delayed that pass till the very last second and made it very difficult for the for the Welsh defence whether to bite in or stay out. And um, what we saw when he broke the game line was, you know, his talent and his, in terms of being able to stay, play the game on his feet and, and, and put his winger away. Well, it's in the locker as the rain comes down. And Parker Ayas. Scrum two Wales, four points the gap still. That would have been a, a bit of breathing space for Ireland. 55 minutes almost gone and Wales with possession. There's the feed, it's gone round a little bit. Three, happy to let play continue and Buckland finds his fly half kick from Costello awkward one Ren has to deal with it had to make that tackle as well Not Healy out. trying to rip them man over the ball shove him out of the way but still there for Wales to use Buckland just looking at his options at the moment steadying himself for the kick over the top here Ireland of numbers back and should be a mark called it is safe one from Jonathan Wren Healy returns the kick brings play down to that Welsh 22 here's Costello launches the Gary Owen loads of height on this one battle in the air well taken Healy didn't take his eye off it for a second there with Foley crossfield kick from the scrum half has he put too much one on that oh, it came off it did come off Combeer surely it should be an Irish line out yeah, that was a big break from, from Ireland. I could see what Foley was trying to do, but he overcooked the kick. And uh, Cumbier was back healing, so he had no idea where the line was. And there's obviously no chat. That was nearly out before he, he tipped it. It was a big, big let off for Ireland. Huge. Uh, I thought it was a great take in the air from Healy, from a, from a Gary Owen. Very difficult, very difficult on the backfield for 10s there. Um, there was a good, good Gary Owen from, from Wales under pressure, but he, he dealt with it incredibly well. <laughs> so Tierney Martin for Ireland Hodman standing in the scrum half position Baird goes up wasn't straight just gifting possession back to Wales yeah first first one not straight there was a couple of marginal ones earlier on that we got away with and, uh, with the height we have in, in our line with uh, with Baird now and, and, and Charlie Ryan um, 
you know, I think we should be able to make it a little bit easier for ourselves. Possession is going to be key for us now. I think once we get into our attacking shape, uh, we look dangerous. We're starting to use Hodden in the outside channels a little bit more. Uh, and he's, he's starting to get mismatches there. So just win the ball wherever we need to, and then you know we'll, our, we'll find our attacking shape and we can start to to get some gain line. Head spaces. Crouch. Fine. Set. Awkward scrum, but Buckley did enough to get it away. Costello almost charged down there. Swung the boot at it. Where's that one going to bounce? Inside the 22 and into touch on the far side of that pitch. Yeah, it's a good kick from Costello. He, his kicking game is um, pretty varied and, uh, and has been pretty accurate tonight so far and he just finds that space the wing has to be high here because obviously they've got threat to run and a lot of, a lot of space to cover in the backfield and pretty much pinpoint Inside. short line out called again Baird the target Foley gets butt off the top Hodnett stepping off his right foot Gets over the gain line. Just gives that extra second, half second even to Heaney to get the ball clear. Keeps it in fields. Here's Evans. He gets something started here with Owen, the try score. Seems like an agency got away. Combeer. This is what he can do. Combeer still going at the 22. Gets the offload as well on the outside. And Jack Morgan for the line for Wales. Where's that ball? Try is given. Well, you mentioned Brian Compeer, Bernard, and that is what the winger can do, setting up the try for his open side flanker. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. He's someone who's been very much under radar in, in, in terms of young players in Wales. Um, another, I said, another talented scar down. I knew they didn't want to get the ball to him quickly. We seem to be playing a, a kicking plan of long and on, so we're kicking it long, which means they, they have time to throw those two long passes to, to Compeer, and we see him here, just gets that mismatch. Um, brilliant footwork, very, very quick, very evasive, and that offload, one-handed offload again. This time to a forward, go up the middle of the seven, um, and, and puts it down. So great reaction from Wales. Pat on the head then for Jack Morgan. The score that's open side. The conversion splits the post, which means that Wales are now 17-14 ahead with 20 minutes to play. Yeah, we've had that coming, to be honest. Since we got that second try, we haven't um, controlled the game. We've made too many errors. And, um, you know, Wales are, are a good enough side to punish us. So we need to regroup again and go back up there and get some scores. Well, Evans knew exactly where he was. Owen, he scored the first setting up. Combier created the second. And look at that step. Beautiful off his left foot. Beautiful balance and the offload as well. And the open side getting away from Maloney and just having the presence of mind to stick that ball down. <laughs> Meanwhile, the restart's gone out on the full. It'll be a scrum all the way back in the halfway line. Yeah, another error there. We're trying to pin it into the right-hand corner. Um, our right-hand corner, but well left by Sam Costello. And uh, he judged it perfectly. And now Wales come back and have a, have a scrum on the halfway. And actually, since they made the changes in the, in the front row, the Welsh scrum has seemed to um, stabilise a little bit and actually get a little bit of dominance. So it'll be interesting, you know, whether they can actually, you know, Ireland can put the squeeze on here and, and, and try and turn the scrum and give our back row a chance of, of, of shutting down the defence. Crouch. Five. Set. John McKee warming up for Ireland, getting ready to come in. Yes. Much more solid scrum, as Bernard said, in that second half since the front row substitutions were made. Attempt to pass out the door, back door from Tian Thomas Wheeler. Didn't quite pay off, though. Yeah, just ran out of space there. Ireland used the touchline as an extra defender and really good pressure from the inside. Wales are trying to get T.M. Wheeler away, or T.M. Thomas Wheeler away with, with Combia down his left-hand side, but um, there's never going to be enough space, and, and you know, line, we, we forced the turnover line out. Line. 17-14. Wales leads. Fared the target. This time it is straight. And Healy to Hodnett. Again, he's well marshalled. 
and Jack Morgan standing right in front of him as if they could telegraph exactly where that was going. Healy with the pass to Kernahan. In fact, it wasn't, excuse me, it was Jonathan Wren. He took it. Baird. Tackle low. Back for a scrum half. Now we for Healy to break again. Wales in over that ball. Can they get their hands on it? Ellis Thomas won the penalty. Ireland not releasing. It's another one that goes against Ireland, but they're just not 100%. No, you can just see Healy there. He, he tried to try to throw a dummy. He went to the line himself, and two forwards are outside him. We're just a little bit late getting in there. And um, this time it was Ellie, Ellis Thomas. Ellis Thomas from Kletley Club who got in over the ball. So all the Welsh back row seem to be a, a very efficient and a real threat at the breakdown yeah, I de definitely think we just need to select our shots a little bit better Healy's got a massively long kicking game and we just need to persevere with that that's where the first, the, the second try came from um, from enforcing the line out in their 22 and, um, we don't seem to be able to break out from, from this area of the field Three substitutions getting ready to come in for Ireland Rob Russell, Colin Riley and Sean McKee, but they're going to have to wait for this penalty attempt. We saw in the first half, Kai Evans, more than enough distance from the halfway line to get this one over. It's for a six-point game. Strikes it so well. Flags stay down this time. No problem with the distance. Just went to the left and wide. Let off. Yeah, but it highlights the, the danger of playing too much rugby in their own half with a kicker of his quality and the fact that our breakdown isn't clean. You know, the Wales will be very happy to just play the game in their half and, and hope for an error or a penalty from, from Ireland and, and give Kai Evans an opportunity to, to continue to add to the scoreboard. So John McKee comes in to replace Tierney Martin. Rob Russell also in and Colin Riley in place of Foley. Fresh legs for Ireland. Can they turn this one around? Gap still only three points then. There's a good 17 minutes left to play. And behind to Costello. Maloney just pushed off it. Back with Buckland. Ireland up quickly this time and Evans swallowed in the tackle by French, held up as well. Ball called by the referee, did well to get to the ground, but where's that ball? Can he get it back? No, they can't, and Ireland get the turnover. Yeah, that could be a big momentum shift. That'll give the players huge confidence and um, it'll rock Wales a little bit. Really good defensive set from, from, from Ireland, particularly French, who pushed through um, the screen runner and used his physical strength to hold up the Welsh ball carrier. Um, and his teammates reacted well to that. And as soon as the referee called Maul, then you know, we made sure the ball didn't come out and we, we restart with a scrum. Time off then, please. Fine Bear just getting a bit of attention from the medical officials. 17 points to 14. Tierney Martin's tried the perfect start for Ireland in the second half, but Jack Morgan hitting back for Wales. Yeah, again, we just we, we just see this. He's, we're backtracking as, uh, defensively because um, we're a little bit narrow and, you know, quality of the offloading tonight has been exceptional for both sides and um, that's a brilliant brilliant response from Wales haven't gone behind yeah, come so time back on just here, just here. I'm just trying to help you that's what he can do Ryan Combeer the feed from Riley Turner in behind to Flannery Flannery looking for the offload just too many red jerseys around him hodding it hands off the first attempt brings it to that Welsh 10 metre line Flannery flats Ireland just about hanging on through Clarkson sets it back a little half break attempt there from Riley Turner 
Flannery. Takes the big tackle and then turn over ball. Ireland looks like they've lost that one on the ground. No. This one looked like they were getting some forward momentum. Wales steal it. And that's Griffiths on the ground. Back with Buckland. To Williams. It's timing now, lads, please. Yeah, back foot then, back foot. 15 minutes to play. Buckland again. No rush to take those box kicks and got loads of height on this one. Combers after it, gets a hand to it and slaps it backwards. Nothing wrong with that. Warren did well to get up there and support. It was Griffiths. There for Buckland. Costello, flat pass, beautiful. Thomas Wheeler, support on the outside. Not the quickest Teddy Williams, but he takes the tackle, sets the ball up nicely, and Wales full of attacking intent inside the Irish 22. Evans this time. Baird trying to counter Rook, told to leave it. And this is Morgan. Try now would be absolutely huge for Wales. Little step from Griffiths on the offload, a good one as well. Much better play, Compeer trying to go on the outside, the handoff. Kernahan drags him to the ground, four metres short of the Irish line. Penalty Ireland. That's a huge turnover from Kernahan. He was faced one on one with Cumbia, very dangerous, but he, he backtracked a little bit, connected to the support, and had to wear it all in to make the tackle and get on the ball. We just see here, Thomas Wheeler's very dynamic, great line from him, pierces the defence, and probably we're lucky he goes he goes outside to a forward there because you know if had a quicker man they would have scored under the post. And we just see here, brilliant bit of defence, one on one, makes a tackle, back on his feet quickly. And if Wales had a score there, it would be hard to see us come back. Still, the gap is only three points, and Ireland would have to put into the line out. I'll find out. Flannery's gone to Troy Half, by the way, which is where he plays most of his club rugby for Shannon. And Rob Russell is in at full back. It's the key to throw. Doesn't find the target. What an opportunity now for Wales. Griffiths. In over the ball. No, Ireland no. trying to poach it. Told to leave it. Buckland. Little chip from Costello. Where's this going to bounce? And I'll tell you, right pace at the right time from Russell. Kicked it ahead as well. Chase over the halfway line. Look at the pace from Turner to get up there. Pressure on Wales now inside their own 22. Turner flew out of the blocks. Costello did well to get away. Under a lot of pressure. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. Turner had committed himself to the tackle. No, no, green, no. Crucially for Ireland away from their own 22. Yeah, time is running out though. It's 11 no minutes on the clock. Yeah, use the line. No, no, no. When it's lifted, when it's lifted, when it's... Wait. Buckland again. Baird almost got a hand to that. Finds touch. Running about the halfway line. Yeah, a couple of very good kicks from Buckland. Box kick there to relieve pressure and get it out. And the previous one where Combier regathered in the air, and that gave Wales the, the the opportunity to play off quick ball um, and led to the line break from from Thomas Wheeler. But definitely better from Russell there. Great cover in the, in our 22 and a long kick relief pressure. A great kick chase from Turner and Cole. The throw this time from McKee was good. Finally trying to set the Irish backs away. From Riley Turner, kick through from Flannery. Did that come off a Welsh jersey? Irish players appealing for the decision for the lineup, and they're going to get it as well. Yeah, great, great outcome for Ireland there. Just trying to put a little grubber kick in behind, and thankfully, it touched the Welsh defender and gives us a second set piece in a row. Instructions for John McKee from Callum Reid. Just making sure they get the call right. Every bit of possession now crucial for Ireland to get back into this one. What a take from Bear. Difficult one. Hardness. And for Riley. 
Baird once more bashing through the first tackle attempt from Costello like he wasn't even there more call by the referee so Baird got to get to ground he does so where is it Wales jerseys lying all over it but the referee says Ireland didn't use it take it in and Wales will get the scrum yeah Baird just got himself a little bit isolated um, he'd be disappointed the coach would be disappointed there wasn't more support it was a set piece move getting Hodden peeling around from the front of the line out off an incredible catch from Baird his athleticism is, is incredible and his skill set to get that ball which was a little bit down the Welsh side but um, unfortunately off the next phase he was just on his own he rode the first challenge, challenge but then the Welsh defenders were able to get a hold of him and hold him up before the, the Irish support could get involved it's your ball as well, so, so time off. It's a tough old game. None more so from that man there, John Hodden. As I say, like you know, they've done their homework, Burn, and they haven't pretty well marshaled. Yeah, he's carried the ball with the same enthusiasm and, and power as he probably has all tournament, but this time um, I think the, the Welsh know exactly when he's going to come and um, I've known he probably doesn't have the offload game yet that um, he will develop and because he's so used to bullying people and getting over the game line, but they've, they've stopped him pretty well. He, he's got a couple of good carries, but um, in general they probably nullified his threat. He's just coming off now. Uh, number 20 for Ireland is... Well, Dave McCann is coming in, so Sorry. I think... Hodden has been told to go off. He looked all too happy about it, but fresh legs John for the last ten minutes. Yeah, he probably wants to finish the tournament beyond the pitch at the end, and, and he probably feels over the next nine minutes he can help Ireland get the win. But it's been a great tournament for him, and he's certainly a player to watch for the future. So Wales have to put into the scrum. Just over nine minutes on the clock, three points the gap. Ireland chasing the Grand Slam for the first time since 2007. Yep, use it now, wait, please. Ball at the back, Buckland feeds. Evans gets a clear taken by Russell Russell trying to use his pace to power through needs support Come though out, tackled by Eston Rees and there on the blind side Flannery was that forward Flatris as the referee back with Riley on goes Maloney Flannery takes it right to that game line pop pass to McKee McKee's still going Riley, little half cap as well for the scrum half. He's going to back himself for the corner here. Oh, well, look at that for a burst of pace. And what about that for a try from Colin Riley? Well, that's brilliant. He went for one about 10 minutes ago and he just got scragged. He obviously has huge pace off the mark. And, um, you know, great, great attack by Foley as well before that. He took the ball to the line, created a little half break. And then from that, just the speed and awareness around the rook. We'll see it here. There's no pillar defence in place, or the pillar is too wide. But he still has a huge amount to do. To take on Evans on the outside is, uh, is no easy task, and that's a massive moment from an impact player off the bench. We saw Foley doing the same thing against England, and he's come on now and, and, and created, a, created a try from nothing, really. Brilliant piece of opportunistic play from the scrum half, who wasn't even in the match day 23 until Casey pulled up earlier on in the warm-up and that could be the try that wins Ireland the Grand Slam yeah we met his parents and his grandparents earlier on and um, they were down down the town excited that he's getting an opportunity today and wow he, he really took it and he could have played a, a key role in, in, in a Grand Slam so conversion to come Healy off the pitch so it's going to be Flannery to take this one just to put four points between them if they can drill this between the posts, it comes off the left-hand post and wide. So 19 points to 17. The gap is two, Bernard, and we have seven minutes left to play. Yeah, it's a dangerous lead. I mean, with all the changes we've had um, in the team, it's, it's going to be difficult now to get the cohesion for terms of our exits. I hope we don't overplay our hand here. We get down there as quickly as possible, use Healy's long kicking game, and make Wales play from deep because, you know, any penalty in, 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 this, in 50 metres is, is kickable for Kai Evans. And six. Substitution for Wales, Nick English comes in. The Bristol tight head. And I think Ellis Thomas is also going off to make way for Johan Rhys Davis 
the Cardiff back row forward. So, a couple of substitutions for Wales. On comes Max Llewellyn. And it'll be Kai Evans to restart once again. Seven minutes left to play. Two points the gap. Ireland need to secure possession. They do so. Kernahan watched that one and claimed it. And on he goes. Needs to find teammates here. But Wales lying all over that ball. To me, they're making no attempt to get away, but the referee says Ireland didn't use it. Scrum to the home side. Yeah, that's a um, big big boost for, for Wales. But stoppy by Ireland. Definitely need to do better than that. And I'll be disappointed we didn't didn't get a clearer lines there quicker. Open play kick. For Wales. Not beaten yet. Ryan Combe, a dangerous strike runner, just standing behind the scrum to the inside of Costello. It's a try scorer. Jack Morgan in the second half is locked in at number eight here off the scrum. So let's see what Wales have got from here. Here is Combe, takes it first receiver, tries to break through the tackle. Taken by Morgan uh, for Buckland. Carry from Griffiths. Buckland goes left. Strength there from McCann just to stop him in his tracks. They tried to hold him up for a second as well. Costello almost intercepted. It is intercepted by Flannery. He broke the line. Riley. Ireland with possession now. Penny. Trying the hand off and then he's held. Knees on the ground, so referee says to let him go. Riley once more. Bairds into contact. Release Five 16. minutes to play. There's a man on the wrong side. I can't reward you. Another carry into contact. Wales do just about enough to roll away from Reese Davis in time for the referee. Flannery kick was blocked down. But it's set up for Convier. Strong carry over the halfway line. And some space on this near side. If Costello can get a hand away. Just took the tackle. And over that one was McCann. Told to leave it. And Ireland is having to soak up pressure now. Another tackle goes in. This time on Reese Davis. Buckland. Back inside from Thomas Wheeler to Kai Evans. And Maloney's over that ball. He's on his feet. He's allowed to contest and he gets the penalty. Brilliant work for the blind third flanker. Uh, that's a key turnover from Maloney. Um, he's actually been quiet to see this evening. Uh, but he gets through a huge amount of work. And then when we needed him there, he, he got on that ball and he stayed there like a limpet. And, and, you know, Kai Evans got a little bit isolated. You know, the fact that the Irish pack have played, you know, the same pack for five games. And, and yet now in the last... You know, last four or five minutes of the game are still putting in efforts like that is, is a huge testament to their fitness fitness levels and also their mental strength to um, to be able to go go five weeks in a row. Brilliant turnover by Martin Maloney. Ireland go for touch just outside the Wales 22. They'll have to put into the line out. Three and a half minutes to play. Grand slam on the line. Possession here, crucial. McKee, really good throw and equally good take from Ryan. Ireland set them all. Ryan just urging his pack to try and get forward momentum from this. Wales come in and then told to leave. What after the hit? Ireland have a penalty. Entry from the wrong side against Will Griffith. So onwards they go. Penalty. Eat up as much time as possible, right? Yeah, that's perfect from Ireland. Back up a penalty with a penalty, and it came from a really good lineup. Mall, a great catch from Ryan, built it very quickly. And now Wales are chasing the game. They want to make it, get a turnover quickly, and they come in the side. And referee fairness communicated very well to um, to the Wales, but they just didn't listen to them. They, they stayed they stayed in an offside position and um, didn't back out. Angus Curran is completely unmarked on this near side here, and he's, he's got his two hands in the air. It's a risky one, though, isn't it? And now Kai Evans has spotted him. You just want to be entertained. Uh, I just want to win. Yeah. Too risky if that went wrong. Too risky. Yeah. Stick it in the corner, win the line out. If they go over from here, that's it. Game set a match. Yeah. 
and there's no reason why to believe we couldn't do it. As long as once we get the, the catch part of it right, um, our build is very good and uh, our body position is very good. I think we can squeeze them over. So McKee to throw. Ryan, Wales don't even challenge. Ireland set them all. Got to get the body position low. Wales struggling to deal with it at the moment. Body's in there on the wrong side. Referee happy to let play continue. It's gone to ground. Where is it? They pick off the back from Maloney. Maloney down that blind side. And he's held just short. Baird calling for it. It's not Baird, it takes it though. It's Reed. Tackle release, Reed. Back foot, lads. Back foot. Ryan. Penny on his shoulder. Tackle this time from Reese Davis. Bear trying to rip it out. Support on his shoulder, but he can only hit the ground. And Wales are offside, so Ireland have the penalty. Maloney looking for options, decides to go himself, makes a half metre. Wales in over the ball. Referee still playing advantage to Ireland for the penalty. It's at the back with Scott Penny, who almost scored in the first half from somewhere similar. This time he gives the pop pass to McKee. Again, Wales must roll away. Riley, flats, French in behind. Chance for Ireland to Turner. Five metres from the line again. Turner twisting on the ground. Wales trying to counter Rook. Ireland commit just enough numbers. Still there. French thought about getting the hands free. Inside the last minute. Two points to the good. A try here surely would secure the Grand Slam. Penny pumping the legs. Almost at the line. Riley wants his pack to have another go. Bairds. Riley gets his hands on it this time, goes out. So close for Ireland. Can they finish with a try? Are they at the line? Are they down? Is that down? Referee's going to go upstairs, I think. Clarkson thinks he's got there, Bernard. Yeah, it was blindsided from us. It's the far side um, of our line of view, but he definitely looks like he got it. Um, he dived over the back of the rook from what I can see here. Just about grounding. That's a try. Should be a try. Should be a try. Takes him on the back of the rock, perfectly entitled to do that. Over the top he goes. It's not a double move when he just places the ball. That's yeah, a try. That's a great try. <laughs> try given. And a great period for play from Ireland. They they went to the corner, they mauled, <laughs> mauled had the penalty advantage, a series of pick and goals, and then you know went out to the back line. First great defence from Wales, stopped French and Turner, but once Ireland get back into that pick and goal game, they're very hard to stop. And um, you know that, that's that's the tournament and, and that's the Grand Slam. That is the Grand Slam. The conversion to come should be a formality for Flannery. What a tournament these under 20s have had from start to finish, starting with England back in Cork, where they blitzed them. France last weekend, another massive test. They passed it with flying colours. The flags go up. The final whistle sounds. And Ireland, under 20s, Grand Slam champions for 2019, Bernard. Yeah, and a brilliant team full of some really promising individuals. But more, more than anything else, I think it's a squad effort. You know, we saw players come in tonight. Riley coming off the bench, you know, when he wasn't even supposed to be in the squad and, and having the, the moment of the game. And um, there's huge amount of talent and, and spirit in this team and uh, they've given us some great memories over the last uh, five five games I think it's fitting they finish with a win first Grand Slam for a long time and to do it away from home is, is particularly pleasing the first Grand Slam in 12 years 2007 the last one but Noel McNamara's side have done it here it wasn't the prettiest in Colwyn Bay they had to scrap and fight for every point that they got but they got there in the end they finished with a try and Ireland have the perfect campaign in 2019 it bodes well for the World Cup the World Championships in Argentina this summer it's been a hard fought road but they've passed their test with flying colours Clarkson's try finishing it off what has been a brilliant night at the death for Ireland against Wales Dara back to you in studio much obliged guys and uh, we'll be back to you for the trophy presentation in a little while so anyway, Eddie, we were um, talking about coolness and bravery and collective belief, patience, skill, but you can't beat luck. It was a bit of that, but I wouldn't want to take it away from them. They had to fight back again. They were behind. They came back, they got the crucial score, and they defended very well. I think they'll 
a little bit of nerves got to them as the game went on. And but for me, the turning point in the game was a try before half time. That settled them down, mm. down, and they, you always felt after that room with a good shot at getting the win. Yeah, absolutely. Luck will do you nothing without the other basics. But tonight. There was a few nervy moments, and that was the discussion we were having, Alla, every sporting discussion in Ireland about whether you have to go over and when victory's inside, grab it. Did they, Fiona? Well, they certainly did. I mean, look at if you were... If there was another match next week, you'd sort of be analysing all of the errors and you'd be looking yeah, at yeah. The, the, the things that they didn't do right. But at the end of the day, they're Grand Slam champions, which is fantastic. And they pulled it out of the bag. Their second half performance was much more assured than the first. You know, they defended much better. They were quicker off the line. Um, they didn't, I suppose, when um, they identified that Wales were loose around the ruck, you know, and they mm. managed, if Wales either won the ruck or they were loose around it. Ryan and Baird to made a big influence. Baird didn't he? was very good when he came on. Like he's a, he's a big young lad, and he really added to it. And we haven't seen a whole lot of him in the in the championship today. So it was it was really good and, and fair play to them. Like that showed great resilience, like we talked about at the start. So and Hodnett, your man Brent started busting first tackles a, a bit more in the second half. Yeah, he was as Eddie said in the first half. He was well marshaled. And you can understand, you know, when teams sit down and look at the opposition strengths. As we look at the table, confirming the good news. Bonus points, of course, for... Sorry, Brent, bonus points. I just don't know why we need to look at the table. I think we know the result. <laughs> I know. I still get used to the three bonus points that you get for uh, completing the slam. It is a nice sight, though, isn't it? Played 5-1-5. Don't see it that often. And I think that the difference is, I'll say something that may seem a bit stupid now, but sometimes it's the way to win it, if you know what I mean. Like, sometimes if you come to games like that and they were to run away with it, and it wasn't a contest. Sometimes being on the sort of seat of your pants for a lot of that match and then suddenly coming through in the last 10 minutes, it's a great way to celebrate it. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. it can be a bit flat. If it's too one-sided, the victory can be a bit flat. But a fantastic season, and fair play to, to, to their coach, Noel McNamara, and the team. They're a team of, uh, of champions now. They play for each other, they play for their coach, and they thoroughly deserved it. Yeah, and let's not forget there were 17-14 down well into the 60s. Yeah, that was, the th that was the thing we said. We've seen this before with them when they've been, as I said, the game is slipping away, they seem to pull it back again and they did it brilliantly. Um, I'm sure they talked all week about being in that situation because we said that Wales would be tricky and they were very tricky. Wales put some good rugby together and in the first half you felt Wales probably were wondering why they were only three points ahead at half time because their line-out and their scrum was a mess. Ireland were making lots of errors. But look, that's the way the game planned out. Ireland must have felt at half-time, if we could get into their half, just hold on to the ball, the breaks would come, and that's actually what happened. And um, for me, it was, again, a lot of resilience, which is a difficult thing at that age group, because, you know, you, you, that young, young players had holding their head under pressure, and again, they did it when they counted most. They certainly did, and I mean, the emptying the bench came late in the championship too, didn't it? Well, that's it, but you know, to be fair to Noel McMurray, he made really good decisions around his bench. Like, he brought Colin Riley on at nine, who hadn't been in the championship squad, inspired. you know, yeah. and it was inspired. Sub, 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 scrum half. Super sub, you know, yeah. super sub, sub. Um, he did really well, and then, you know, it worked when Jake Flannery came in, you know, moved into ten, he sort of moved the ball a little bit better, some of his kicks were just, you know, he got the rub the green on them and it sort of brought them I suppose brought them forward so he wasn't afraid to bring the bench on and sometimes when you're on the, you know, when you're a sub you, you get a chance to look from further away and to see well this is what I would do if I was on and you know Riley certainly did that with his break you know through the ruck and um, I think you've been able to just have, a, have another little look at it, it was, it was very good. Russell was also good when he, when he came on and moved to, to full back you know he just added something but it's great that such a squad you know the 23 that were there you know the Harry Byrne as well um, Hawkshaw, you know, let's not forget these people who have all been part of it, and for me, they're all Grand Slam champions now. Yeah, and we, we, we will get a chance possibly to ask Noel McNamara why it was such a late call withdrawing the 9 and 10, because... Well, I think, uh, look, they were key players. Uh, at the end of the day, as a coach, and Eddie will tell you, you give the players the maximum time to get them right. They were so key, he would have said to them, OK, look, I, pre I presume he would have said to them, you've all week to get right. If you're not right, right on match day, then I can't play you. Yeah, but, a tricky one. Day, but it's the balance yeah. between... It's a tricky one because if, if you put too much weight on fellas getting right, the guys that eventually play oh, are saying, well, I'm not really, done it before I'm not really for choice, yeah. you know, and, and um, it, does, it doesn't work for their confidence. So it's a, it's a very delicate no, but thing to manage. If you have key players, like Harry Byrne was a key player, as was Casey. Well, I'm not, no, we're not debating with their key players. We're debating at how do they manage that How do you manage it, yeah. When these 
these guys were given the chance to get fit, but the guys coming in to eventually replace them are getting the message. Well, it was a master stroke. But but why not Joe take Schmidt it off the agenda? Of Sean O'Brien, Joe Schmidt will leave, will leave him to match day or whatever to play him. So they have, you know, they have enough time to put people in and out of training so that they both yeah. can be expected to and play. And we're in I danger think, of getting off the point, which is that it was yeah, a, a, exactly. a fantastic the evening point, and, and a wonderful come and achievement. Seamless, as we said with the subs. They fitted seamlessly into the side. They didn't damage the side. They didn't damage the ethos. They all played as one. So it didn't matter too much when the subs came on or whatever. They knew what they had to do. They yeah. all played their part. Certainly being in tight games through the championship would have, you know, they wouldn't have felt like panicking. Like they know they came out of the, the crucible before. So when things went a bit wrong tonight, they kept their nerve, you know. That's what we talked right, about yeah. yeah. One moment, Fiona. Sorry, I'll come back to you. Let's just uh, enjoy the sight of the young lads getting their medals from the presentation committee. We'll rejoin Bernard and Hugh. Yeah, the presentation committee, including Pa Whelan there right in front of you, former Ireland and Munster hooker, of course, the proud Gary Oman as well. I'm sure he's enjoying this, giving the players their medals and shaking hands as Ben Healy comes forward. Well did a job today didn't he having to step in for Harry Byrne who was that late withdrawal and what about that Tom Clarkson finishing with a try so Charlie Roy the captain last to receive his medal I'm sure for Hawkshaw as well and another injury picked up over the course of the campaign it's a, a little bit bittersweet for him but he joins Charlie Ryan there and it's nice to see as well Hawkshaw being involved with things as he puts the medal around his neck Charlie Ryan both former Buccaneers now with UCD and Hawkshaw Six Nations Champions 2019 Grand Slam Champions Ireland fully deserving of that trophy and who knows what's next for this bunch of players a World Cup in Argentina this summer as we said but the future around the province is bright for an awful lot of them I'm sure and this will not be the last we'll see of an awful lot of these talented talented young Ireland under 20 internationals a brilliant campaign masterminded by Elno McNamara and his team for Charlie Ryan the captain today and for all the players who played their parts a fantastic couple of months in the Six Nations Championship and a smiling coach I'm sure as well we'll have more analysis from Dara and the lads after this break for the under 20s and of course the great thing too Eddie about this is that's the finest hour for some of these fellas and for other fellas in 10 years time this will just be a footnote in a stellar career absolutely yeah I mean there's always a couple of diamonds come out of the under 20s um, you don't need a lot of them every year you need maybe two or three but the other side of that is a lot of fellas that might not get cap for Ireland might go into professional game now all these boys see themselves on a pathway to professionalism not all of them will make it but this experience as well is huge for them and giving them an opportunity to put up their hand and I suppose you know we will have some of those guys come through for Ireland uh, well, 12, at some point. 12 out of 12 out of 30 that started in 2007 and 2010 yeah. uh, made it through. So just a quick mention, we haven't mentioned Charlie Ryan, and I think being a captain at that level, you know, I mean, it takes on a lot of responsibility. He did a brilliant job as well. Yeah, fair enough. And David Hawkshaw was put out as well uh, earlier in the championship. Overall, this vintage rate them, Fiona? No good. I suppose that should they're the best of the crop right now, and it is like what Eddie and is saying. It's you know where will they be in, in ten years' time? Will they be the the Conways, the Zebos, and you know the that crop of Reese Ruddock? You It'll know, be fun to watch. It. Yeah, it will. It will. But and then the next step is like they need to push on. They need to get their chances with Munster, Leinster, Connacht, and Ulster. You know, we look at Hardnett there. We spoke about him a lot. Is he going to? overstep Jack O'Donoghue, is he going to overstep Oliver in the Munster setup? you know, is he going to be given his chance in the next year or so, and that's what needs to happen for them to step out, but for tonight it's just, it's fantastic, like it's just brilliant. All looks like a good omen for tomorrow, my thanks to Eddie, Fiona and Brent for their company this evening in studio as we look at those last happy picks from Colwyn Bay, where the Irish under-20s have been crowned Grand Slam champions 2019. Thanks for joining us, go easy.